All right, let's get started. Jeez, uh, I'm yelling. Uh, so, uh, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, and I'll just, uh, you, this isn't working. Okay. So, who am I? I'm from Halifax, Canada. My name is Brad Tunar. I have a wife and son, 15 month old son. Uh, this is less cute. That's me playing frisbee. I, I was up in Devon's uh, this weekend actually. That's why I'm hobbling around here. <laughs> it's a demanding sport. Uh, I'm also a creative web developer. So I uh, dabble in design, but I'm mostly a back-end developer. do some front-end development as well. Uh, and uh, this is the first uh, website that I ever built professionally. It's pretty sweet. Look at those. Look at that. <laughs> uh, it, was a, it was actually, that was a professional contract in 1998. I designed and developed that site. Suckers. Uh, <laughs> I started a web hosting company in 2003 uh, with my business partner was my roommate at the time. We were in college together and uh, still going strong today. So. Uh, last year, I started WP App Store, a uh, marketplace for WordPress products. So we sell, we brought all the themes and plugins together from the big vendors and put them in one place and stuck them in the dashboard and no one bought them. Because <laughs> it was a big barrier to entry, right? You, you have to install this other plugin to get at all the other stuff. So it was a lot of, a lot of work for the customer. So we're looking at ways to change it into a more traditional marketplace because we have all these awesome products in one place still so uh, look, look for that really soon uh, probably in a couple weeks time actually uh, leaflets is a collaboration between myself and uh, Jason Schuller of press 75 and the guys at organic themes uh, and uh, it's just a, a simple simple CMS for uh, simple, simple websites. We're just doing one-page websites to start. I know, crazy, right? Uh, Delicious Brains is a company that I started in January uh, this year to sell a new WordPress plugin, a premium plugin, a uh, pro version of my free uh, WP Migrate DP plugin. But let's start at the beginning. I started WordPress in 2004. I was just looking to blog. One of my coworkers started blogging, and I was like, sure, I'll do that. Uh, I took a look at movable type, uh, didn't like it, uh, and WordPress looked like a much better fit for me. Uh, so then, you know, I started think tinkering with teams over the years and, you know, you know, tweaking this and that, and then I wrote my first plugin in 2007 uh, called LinkedIn H Resume. It just sucked in your resume from, from LinkedIn and allowed it to allowed you to style it on your own on your own site, which is pretty cool. So then you can just manage your resume in one place. Never really took off. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was cool. Um, in 2008, I started working at Fjord Interactive, a creative agency. And then uh, we started building uh, client websites in WordPress. I'd never done that before. Uh, this was the first site we built. It was for the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation. It launched in April 2008, and I did a presentation at WordCamp Vancouver in, in late 2008 about building this site. Uh, there was no custom post types at the time. I was using custom fields, throwing IDs in there. It was chaos, <laughs> and it was awesome. Uh, <clears throat> so this is uh, so as I was building client websites with WordPress, I, I noticed that something was really painful. Uh, I'd be developing locally, and I'd want to move the site. To production or to staging, and it was just painful because you had to, you know, you exported the database using PHP MyAdmin usually, but you had to get access to it and from some shitty host probably, <laughs> uh, and it took a lot of, a lot of work sometimes to get the credentials from the client and stuff. Uh, but anyway, so you got your your database dump in SQL, and then you did a find and replace, you know, for the URLs and file paths that you need to replace. And then you realize that it nuked all your widgets, because <laughs> widgets are serialized, so any find and replaces that are done in, in your widgets uh, corrupts the serialization. So then 
the widgets, you have to rebuild the widgets each manually, copying and pasting from one to the other, and I had enough of it. So I built this. It's very simple. Uh, it just exports your database, but in the meantime, uh, or while it's doing that, it does the find and replace, handles serialized data, and takes care of all that stuff for you. So, <clears throat> so when you get your uh, data dump, it's all set, ready to go, ready to import. And so I released that in uh, March 2009 and maintained it over the years, kind of casually, uh, and just, uh, you know, when new versions of WordPress came out, I'd, you know, make sure it was working, because I was using this all the time, right? Uh, so, uh, and then, you know, in August 2012, I had had a lot of feature requests from developers through the .org forms. And so I decided, you know, I might as well <laughs> do something for these people since they're using my plugin and they love it. And so I added these, these few options here. So you, you can either turn replace GUIDs on or off. Uh, you can choose to not export the spam comments, like avoid those. Uh, not export post revisions. Uh, you can compress gzip with gzip as well. So, and I actually optimized it and made it four times faster. That's probably the most important thing. Um, and so, and I read around that time, I kind of, I started to, to realize that this is probably really useful for other professionals that are doing similar things. I was getting around 100 downloads a day at the time. So, and I thought, well, maybe they'd be willing to pay for additional features and some support and regular updates, more, more frequent than once a year. So I added that to the, the plugin, that sidebar, just laying out the features that I was thinking of, and yes, no, if you're willing to pay for it. <clears throat> uh, and, uh, and if you hit yes, then it would slide down, and it would ask you how much. <laughs> and it would ask for your email address uh, and some comments. Uh, and I got, you know, a few responses. Some 289 said yes. Six, oh, sorry, 61 said no. Uh, average price people were willing to pay was $28. Uh, somebody said $2. <laughs> of course. Uh, someone said 200 though. So it was pretty encouraging. I collected 192 email addresses. But was the remarkable part was the comments. Because the only comments I got about this software was that there's a bug, it's not working. <laughs> uh, I think I got one positive comment in the .org forums during those years from 2009 to 2012. Um, and, and keep in mind this is before the reviews, WordPress.org reviews uh, were turned on. Uh, so th these are the kinds of comments uh, that, that I got. Uh, that one's not, that's very encouraging, but it's, I don't know what he wanted. But, <clears throat> but this guy, this guy was a little bit more uh, informative. I was really happy to find this plugin. It will save me so much time. When the pro version comes out, I will buy it. Smiley face. Thank you. I like the smiley face. It was a nice touch. Uh, thank you so much for this incredible plugin. Notice the all caps. You have saved us from hours of stress and hours of struggle. You rock. I would be very, very interested. I'm in the midst of a site transfer that has been hell incarnate, and something has, <laughs> that could be truly turnkey would be heaven. That guy is dramatic. Uh, but, I mean, this is, these are the kinds of comments that pushed me forward. The, this, this is the stuff... Obviously, these people were experiencing a lot of pain in their development, and enough so that they wrote these passionate comments. Um, so, you know, if I could build something that relieved more of the pain, great. Um, and then auto switched on uh, the .org comments the next month, which is great because now everyone else, all the other plugin authors, now can get this feedback from their from their users, which is fantastic. Um, and so far, uh, WP MigrateDB has received 21 reviews, and they're all five star so far. And that's another one. Uh, so all this encouragement, I just went forward, 
in December, uh, we started building uh, WP Migrate DB Pro, Pro version. Uh, and there was lots of challenges. One of the features is pushing. So you're pushing your data from local to remote. So you have to deal with firewall issues. You need to deal with uh, limitations on the server, uh, like the PHP uh, max upload size. You need to detect that and make sure the packets that you send up are, are less. And there's just there's a ton of things. <laughs> there's, there's limitations with MySQL as well. So sending from PHP to MySQL, there's a max allowed packet size is a, one of the limitations. So we had to accommodate for all these things. And we did a lot of testing. And it took about 800 hours, developer hours, to build this and test it. Uh, private beta uh, we did in March. I just sent a minute 45 video to some developers that, were, that I knew. And uh, they were more than happy to give it a try. Uh, and just before, I was pre we were pretty close to launching, but just before that, I ran a little marketing campaign uh, for uh, WordCamp Miami. Uh, and uh, just threw up a, a landing page, uh, just introducing the plugin that we're about to launch, and uh, showed a video, and collected some email addresses. We only, I only collected 23 email addresses, but, but it was worth it, I think, because you know, out of that, we, we got a few customers. And so it paid, you know, it wasn't very hard to set this up. So it was, it was worth it. So on April 16th, we launched. And I very carefully crafted the email that I sent out to the, our subscribers. We had 400 subscribers, which is not a lot. So you, you have to really value those. So I went through every one that had a missing first name. And I tried to determine what the first name was. So I could say, hi, Joe, or whatever that is. Um, ja Jow? I think it's Jow. Uh, 70, so 76% of the, uh, the people I emailed opened the email. 72% clicked through. 70 people out of 400 bought, which is 17%, uh, with, with the coupon code. So if they didn't buy with the coupon code, I didn't, I didn't track them. Um, I queued up a, 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 a post on WP Daily, and we and that pushed some more traffic to the site. I reached out to Chris Coyer in advance, and uh, and just sent him the beta, the, the video, and he was stoked when he saw it because this is one of the biggest pain points, uh, one of the biggest questions that he gets, or most often requested, uh, or most often asked questions on Shop Talk Show. Who, who listens to Shop Talk Show? A few people. Awesome. Um, and and he, he posted it on CSS Tricks homepage as well, which is awesome. Uh, Tom McFarlane reached out to me and, and asked if he could do a giveaway on his site, which was awesome. Uh, and he ran that for a week, I think. Um, and then I just got a lot of great tweets from prominent WordPress developers like Pippin Williamson and Jonathan Christopher. Just loved, loved the product. And uh, that amounted to 3,000 visits in two and a half days, and 4K in sales in the, in the first uh, two and a half days. And this is what the sales look like uh, for the two, first two months, which is a bit surprising to me only because it didn't go like that. <laughs> I thought it was going to be launch and then flatline, but it seems like it's taking a while for people to warm up to the idea and to actually get, get around to purchasing, or they maybe they rub, run up against a, a bad migration problem, and then, then that's when they decide to buy. So. Oh, yeah, the green's the sales. The blue is quantity. It's, I don't know, it's not the greatest graph. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't give that out. You'll have to extrapolate. <laughs> um, so now I'll, I'll just give you a little... Is there any questions before... I, I can give you guys a demo uh, pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that, did I? Uh, there's, there's three plans. There's the personal edition, which is $29. There's the business, $49 and $99 for the developer. And the difference is just... 
Uh, the developer's unlimited sites, and the other two have less sites. It's a very similar model to Gravity Forms. Um, that's pro probably the most successful plug-in to model, so I went with it. Yeah. Does that mean you charge by per year, like Gravity Forms? I do, yeah. Because if you don't charge per year, uh, then it's not sustainable, right? Because then the next year, uh, you, you don't have uh, any revenue from your recurring customer, right? Like if people are still using that plugin and still using your support, right? Still emailing right. you, you're still providing the service indefinitely. So the alternative I've seen is to charge for major upgrades. Right, right. Uh, well, th so you get updates and support is part of the package. That's what you get with your subscription, right? So yeah, same, exactly same models for Gravity Forms. Yeah. Um, so any more questions for demo before the magic begins? It's way over there. Yeah, it's really small. <laughs> Okay, so I have a, I have a developer. So this is just my blog. Uh, so I've got dev.bradt.ca here, and here I've got a staging site, staging.bradt.ca. So you can note, you notice as I switch between them, they're exactly the same. Let me refresh. Well, that's not going to be much of a demo. <laughs> I've already synced them. Okay, I've got to uh, drop. Yay! Yeah, isn't that great? I, sh I swear I did it earlier. <laughs> um, you know what? It doesn't matter. I, I, I won't bother. There's a video online. You can see the differences. When I'll just show you how the plugin works. Um, so if we go to... Tools I've already installed WP Migrate DB Pro. So if we go to Migrate DB Pro under Tools. We can uh, so you can export file just like the free plugin, uh, same options as a free plugin. But in addition, you can do additional find and replaces. Uh, and it doesn't usually look like that. I swear, <laughs> this is just a really low resolution. Uh, and uh, so you can choose which tables you want to migrate. If you just want to migrate a few tables, like maybe you just want to migrate WP options for some reason. And uh, there's some advanced op options here as well. Uh, those are the same as the free plugin. But we're going to do something a little bit more fun. We're going to pull. So I want to pull. So let's pretend that my staging site is up on a magic server somewhere. And my clients are adding uh, a bunch of content to it. And so I want to pull that content down to my dev environment so I can test. Maybe there's a bug or something I want to test that I can't reproduce locally because the data is different. So I want to pull that down. Uh, so I go to Migrate DB Pro. On, I've also installed Migrate DB Pro on the staging site. And I go to the settings tab and I grab the connection info here and I paste it into the pull box here and it doesn't connect because I don't have SSL installed on my local machine so I take away the S and it should connect just fine and then I take a look and as, as you'll see here it's actually pre-filled all the replaces so it knows that it should replace uh, staging.bradt.ca with dev.bradt.ca and file paths as well. And, uh, you know, we can choose to back up the database locally before it does, it replaces it as well. Uh, and then, so should we do it? Let's do it. 
so that's that's running. So what's what's happening right now? If we look at the uh, local database, you see that the it's creating uh, tables prefix with underscore migrate, and so as it's running, it's creating those tables. And at the end, it just renames, it drops all the other tables and renames. And that's going to take probably another less than 20 seconds. And this is, what is this, 24 megabyte database, I think. So it's quite small. But we have you know, customers that are migrating a gigabyte of data from a remote server down. We've, we have customers on the worst web hosting you can imagine. <laughs> migrating sites down so to the dev. Like Sorry? Do you, do you put the site in maintenance mode or something while this is happening? Or do you just let it it's all live. It, it, you don't have to shut down your site at all. So if somebody hits it in the middle of a table rename? Table rename? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that would, that would work just fine. I thought you meant it was renamed, the developer was renaming the table. Sorry? You're pulling it into staging, so renaming your own tables on your own staging server isn't going to matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but you would use this to push to production. Yes, you, you, so you can go the other way as well. So a, another example would be if, if you just set up the staging site. So <clears throat> say I just set up the staging site, and I just installed the vanilla, like no just standard WordPress install. Uh, and then I installed Migrate DB Pro. Uh, I could grab the, the the credentials here, the connection info, paste it into push, and I could push a copy of the database up to uh, staging, and it would, and then and then I'm done. So. Sorry, am I considering? Your production site. Right. So you could. So this is a staging site, but you could just as easily push oh, to production. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and also uh, another question we get quite often is, uh, can you push from one remote to site to another? So say staging is on on a server up here, and your production server is up here. You can push and pull between those as well. What you can't do, which some people get confused by is you can't push down to your local machine from, from a remote server because it can't see it. <laughs> your remote, unless you're broadcasting your IP or something, you know, like, which you can do. I mean, you could make your, your local machine visible, but usually you just do a pull, you know? So, yeah. Um, so that's about it. I mean, if, you know, if there's any other questions, it's neat. It's neat? Yeah. That's great. Thank you. I will put you in the next slide. <laughs> Very box. <laughs> Very box? I will tell you that. No, it's neat. Is the GPL? <laughs> we, we have a dispute over whether it's boss or neat. It is GPL, yes. Yes. Totally GPL. Yeah. On the business side, how much customer service? Yeah, good, good question. Uh, this is this is the time where I wish I was using Help Scout <laughs> or one of those services where they give you nice analytics for your support. We're actually just using G Gmail, a Gmail account, uh, because we didn't want to spend a lot of time setting up some kind of solution, right, and delay launch. So we just threw a Gmail account together. Um, but I, if I was to ballpark it, I'd say uh, we get. Four a day on average, I'd say. I'd say. So, yeah, that's. I think. I think there's often a fear, like, you know, I'm going to launch this plugin, but then how am I going to deal with all this support? You know, um, but don't be afraid of that. I, in fact, when we launched, it was a relief to get the feedback, and to to have that feedback and to be able to make the product better. Um, it just, I don't know, it's refreshing somehow. I don't. Know, it's kind of weird to say, but. It was. 
with some of the e-commerce <coughs> things that add their own set of tables, if, is there any uh, problems in those areas or, or support or not support? Like if using Cart66, it seems like it has some local, some URLs that are tied to the sure. local host. Maybe I don't know. I'm just curious. Yeah, uh, I haven't ran. We haven't run into any specific issues with e-commerce systems. We have run into some plugins doing some funny things. Yeah. As everyone, is, any developer in WordPress knows, there's some plugins out there that do funny things. People are learning, and that's fine. Uh, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it, I think, yeah, I don't want to name names. That's <laughs> one you should stay away from. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, um, no, there hasn't been any big problems. There was, there was one where it was using, like it was storing uh, the data as JSON encoded in the Word WordPress database, which WordPress's convention is to use you know, PHP serialization, but it was using JSON encoding, which we didn't support at the time. We do now. <laughs> uh, so so if, if the plugin runs into JSON encoded data, it'll treat it like JSON decode it, do the finding and replacing, and re-encode it. So uh, it handles that now. Yeah. So we're just, I guess the point is, we're making this as robust as possible. We just, we love getting feedback and people saying it's not working in this situation, and we're like, okay, we'll fix it for that situation. Within reason, if it's a, like a crazy scenario where no one's ever gonna have this problem, again, then obviously we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it. But if it's a scenario where you know people are, other people are going to probably run into it, we're right on top of it. So, which is fun. Anything else? Cool. Thanks a lot, guys.